The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord. And to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate and the law of the Lord. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, We can't help but pray the canticle of Simeon and pray for our beloved Pope Benedict XVI, such a good and faithful servant who has been so deeply anointed by the Holy Spirit, deeply seeking the light of God in his life, really from the very beginning. In his own description of his life, he was born on the Easter Vigil in a poor German village, and he was baptized on Easter Sunday, the day of light. His mother didn't let 24 hours pass for his baptism. He says that that gift, the gift of receiving the Paschal Sacraments under the light of the resurrection, became a source of strength for his whole life, being perhaps certainly among the greatest theologians in recent memory in the life of the church. Someone once asked him if it was through his study that he had come to fall in love so deeply with the truth. He said, actually, my love for the truth and my love for the faith was communicated in my own experience of the sacraments as a child. He says, one day I came to realize that it was in those simple gestures of the priest at the altar that God was real and God was with us. We pray that through the simple gestures of our prayers and offerings that he may experience the power of God upon him, the protection of the Almighty. In another interview, at a difficult time in his own experience as an archbishop, he was once asked about his times serving in a prisoner of war camp after World War II. As many know, he was captured by the Allies, like most of those who were forced into service in the military. And it was there where he continued to seek the priestly vocation. And amidst the destruction of his beloved country, the reality of the Holocaust that was beginning to be revealed to the German populace, the reporter, who since converted through these series of conversations with Pope Benedict, Peter Sewald, He asked him, he said, how did you get through all that and still believe that God is love? And he said, I chose to focus on what was beautiful. And when there is nothing beautiful around you, the beautiful is within you. Because God abides within us. 
sometime later in his pontificate, as he was experiencing some very difficult moments as the successor of Peter, he would preach in a homily about Our Lady. And the scriptures this week are all about light because Christmas is the season of light. The world's becoming darker, but Christ is the light. The the world is cold, but we are enkindled with divine love as we approach Jesus in the manger. And today, as we enter into the temple where Simeon proclaims that Christ is the light to the nations, and St. John says in the first letter, God is light, so walk in the light, the church is inviting us to discover the light. And the light is Christ, and the light is inside of us, and the light is stronger than the darkness. In a very dark time in the life of Benedict as Holy Father, he once wrote, Where will we find the light? And Mary, who was and is totally united with her son, Christ, amidst the darkness and sufferings of this world, those who have found the face of the mother discover courage to go on. In the Western tradition, Benedict was preaching at the consecration of three bishops. He says, in the Western tradition, the name Mary, Maria, was translated Maris, star of the sea. This became a title of her that expresses exactly this experience of the church. How often does our history, which we are living, appear like a dark sea whose waves are pounding, threatening against the small, tepid vessel of our life in the church. At times, it seems, the night is even impenetrable. Often we can be under the impression that evil alone has power and that God is infinitely remote. We often glimpse only from afar the great light, Jesus Christ, who has overcome death and evil. Yet then, we see very near that light which is kindled so close to us when Mary says, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. We see the bright light of goodness that emanates from the mother of God. Benedict continues, In the goodness with which she met, and continually meets the needs of the great and small aspirations of numerous men and women, we recognize the goodness of God himself in a very human way who through the mother of God is very close to us. With his goodness... He brings to the world ever anew Jesus Christ. Hence the great light of God is with us. He gave us his mother as our mother that we might learn from her to say the yes that also makes us become good. What is this powerful insight of Pope Benedict? Well, first, that God, who is light, comes to us through Mary. And those that live in her and through her are living in the light of God. And if we are living in the light of God through Mary, the path of light is to make the response of Mary our life. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be unto me according to your word. Every day, every choice that is lived in Mary and through Mary becomes a moment of illumination for us. And we then become bearers of the light of God. And as we trust in his goodness and as we seek to live according to that goodness, we also become light, not because we're anything, but because God is merciful and good. Today we can ask that having received so much light 
through the life of this simple and humble servant in the vineyard of the Lord, as he referred to himself the day of his election, that he might be immersed in the light. That our prayers through Our Lady might be a holy protection for him, and that And that the goodness of God that has truly been communicated through him may also be deeply treasured by the church. Let us conclude with these words of our mother foundress. Our lady knew that her maternal mission was to conceive the God made man by the power of the Holy Spirit in the most perfect dwelling in the most exalted culture of love, her most pure womb. There he received, he assumed, and he came to know everything beautiful that a human being could offer the Redeemer. In her and from her, the world was full of God, and the world full of God was her, her mother. She is that new civilization. Let us pray that as Benedict chose to focus on what was beautiful in those difficult times of his life, that the one who is all beautiful may embrace him and accompany him, and that we almost also might be ambassadors of that beauty, of proclaiming the light of God who is with us through Mary. All for the heart of Jesus. Through the heart of Jesus.